Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel and I'm now going to in this video answer question number three from the mechanics um, M1 Edexcel International A-level paper, not the GCE one, the International A-level IAL paper from June 2018. Um, and this question states a cyclist starts from rest at the point O on a straight horizontal road. The cyclist moves along the road with constant acceleration of two meters per second squared for four seconds and then continues to move along the road at constant speed. At the instant when the cyclist stops accelerating, a motorcyclist starts from rest at the point O and moves along the road with constant acceleration of 4 meters per second squared in the same direction as the cyclist. The motorcyclist has been moving for T seconds when she overtakes the cyclist. Capital T here. Sketch on the same axis a speed time graph for the motion of the cyclist and a speed time graph for the motion of the motorcyclist to the time when the motorcyclist overtakes the cyclist. Okay. So now what we need to do here is we need to make a pair of axes. A speed against time okay so we have our y-axis and we have our x-axis okay so you got speed let me just make it a bit thinner okay you have speed which is in meters per second as they're given here meters per second squared meters per second right and time in seconds. Okay, time in seconds. Okay, all right. And then it says, okay, it says a cyclist starts from rest at the point of, so at rest, so at time equals zero, cyclist starting from there, and accelerates, uh, constant, constant, acceler constant acceleration for four seconds. So basically, if you think about it, for four seconds, the final, the initial velocity is going to be zero, and it can accelerate for four seconds at two meters per second squared. So it's V equals U plus AT. So it's going to be eight meters per second. Okay, the, the velocity at which, or the speed at which they, the, the cyclist gets. Let's say that's eight meters, let's say that's eight there, and let's say that's four seconds. So after four seconds, they'll reach eight meters per second squared. So it's just a sketch, nothing you have to be accurate at all. All right, and then after that, um, continues to move along the road at constant speed. Okay, so then after that, it's going to be a straight line at that, at that speed of 8 meters per second squared. Oh, sorry, 8 meters per second. So, okay, then it says at the time or at the point when the, the cyclist stops accelerating, which is after 4 seconds, okay, that's when the motorcyclist starts from rest at the same point O and moves along the road with constant acceleration four meters per second squared in the same direction as the cyclist. So now at four seconds, the motorcyclist is going to start. So from rest, but acceleration is going to be um, bigger. It's twice as big. So this is going to, this line is going to be a lot steeper. Okay. And then when you get to the time T, which we'll just assume is here, we'll just draw it over here, the time T. Okay. So let's just say it's, there okay then it says one second what does it say about t it says the motorcyclist has been moving for t seconds okay so the motorcyclist has been moving for t seconds so the t here is actually this this over here so this is actually four plus t okay the t is the time for which this capital t is the time for which the the motorcyclist has been moving okay so at that point okay you can say that that's let's say that's when they they, they over um, they reach the same level where the motorcyclist is, is about to basically overtake the cyclist. Okay, so that's how we can sketch this, I guess. That's, so you've got your zero here. Okay, so that's starting from um, zero time. This person starts from four seconds out at the point when this person has stopped um, accelerating. Let me just... Okay, so this is like after four seconds they stop accelerating. So... Just join that together a bit better, and there we have the sketch. Okay, that's um, shows that quite clearly. Okay, yeah. Okay, so we don't know we don't know how long this motorcyclist has been moving for, so we can't we can't write down what the actual acceleration is. Okay, so that's about as good as we can go. This has to be steeper than that. 
this starts off from zero when that stops accelerating. So when that becomes straight, that starts. And at a certain time, which is four plus t seconds, that's when um, this will, they will be overtaking each other, or one of the motorcyclists will be overtaking the cyclist. Okay, so that's part A done. Then it says part B, find giving your answer to one decimal place the value of t. Okay, so we need to look at this graph here, and I'll show my steps over here so that I can um, I don't have to keep going up and down the page. So basically, we've got to find what the value of this t is. Now, how do we um, connect these two different graphs together? How do we connect the graph of the cyclist and the graph of the motorcyclist? Well, the thing that, that is the same about their journey is the distance that they've traveled. They both started from the same point, which is a point O. Okay, started from O, started from O. And they both, um, you know, at the time 4 plus T, they're both at the same distance um, away from O because the motorcyclist has caught up with the cyclist by that point. So the distance of the distance traveled by the motorcyclist and the cyclist is the same. So if we know the distances traveled are the same, the distances are the same. Okay, that means the area, because the area under a speed time graph tells us the distance, the area of the trapezium, okay, the area of the trapezium, this one for the cyclist, must be the same as the area of the, the triangle, which is the one for the motorcyclist. Okay, so if you look at the area of the trapezium, you're going to have um, basically its vertical height. The vertical height of the trapezium is 4, so it's 8. Okay, this from there to there is 8. And the length of this side here is uh, 4 plus t. And the length of this side here is t, the two parallel sides. Okay, so the area of the trapezium is going to be the distance between the parallel sides divided by 2 times the sum of the parallel sides, t plus t plus 4. Okay, so that's going to give you 4 times 2t plus 4, which is 8 t plus 16. That's the area of the trapezium. And then we have the area of the triangle to deal with. So if you look at the triangle, I'm, I'm just doing this in this part, part here so we can see everything in front of us. Well, the base of the triangle is t. Let me just bring that down a bit. Or we'll take it up a bit better. The base of the triangle is t. And the height of the triangle, well, we don't know the height of the triangle, but we do know that the acceleration that it reaches is going to be um, the time that it was going for, okay, which is t times um, its acceleration. Acceleration was 4. Okay, so we know the acceleration was 4, so it's going to be 4t. This, this point here is going to be 4t, okay, because it's going to be v equals u plus at. We know u is 0, we know a is 4, and we know the time it's going for is t seconds. This is t. Okay, so the, 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 the velocity it reaches is 4t. Okay, so this is 4t, the speed it reaches. So we can work out the area of this in terms of t as well. So the area of the triangle, okay, is going to be a half times the base times the height, which is going to be 2t squared. So I know that these two are the same. I know that the area of the, the, area of the triangle, which is 2t squared, and the area of the trapezium, which is 8t plus 16, they are equal to each other. Okay, so what we can do here is we can set up an equation. We can say 2t squared is equal to 8t plus 16. So we end up with 2t squared minus 8t minus 16 equals 0. It's like a quadratic equation. We can divide everything by 2. It's left with t squared minus 4 minus, sorry, 2t divided by 2, uh, 4t, sorry, what I'm talking about, minus 4t minus 8 equals 0. So t squared minus 4t minus 8 equals 0. Now this is a quadratic equation, and I don't think we can find an exact value, so it cannot be factorized, which we can tell quite quickly, because this number, you can't find two numbers multiplied to give you minus 8 and add to give you minus 4, because it's only 4 times 2, 8 times 1, no. So we have to uh, either complete the square or use the quadratic formula. I'm going to complete the square here because I prefer to do that, to remember it, so that something that's important for us to do in other, other subjects. So completing the square, first of all, I'm going to get rid of that minus 8, add 8 to both sides, 
Then I'm going to write my bracket, which is squared, which is going to give me t minus a half of that number, which is 2. Take away the square of that number, which is a minus 4. Okay, so you're going to have that will give me t squared minus 40 plus 4 minus 4 will give me exactly that. So then we can add 4 to both sides. So we have t minus 2 squared equals 8 plus 4, which is 12. So we can say t minus 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 12. Okay, so t is equal to 2 plus or minus the square root of 12. So the square root of 12 is going to be 4 times 3, which is 2 root 3. 2 root 3. So our answer is, there's two answers, but I think one of them might not be sensible. You have 2 plus uh, 2 root 3 and 2 minus 2 root 3. Let's see what they give us. I'm suspecting this is going to be um, a negative value, so therefore it won't give us an answer that we can use. All right, of course, you can't have a negative time. So I think this will be the only answer. So you have 2 plus 2 root 3. And that gives you 5.464. 5.464. And the other one, I'm sure it will be negative here. So if we go back here, yeah, that gives us negative 1.464. So we're not going to take this answer. So the time, the value of t is going to be 5.46 seconds. Okay, 3SF. And there's the answer for part B. One decimal, ah, one decimal place, sorry. Okay, read the question. It says one decimal place. Okay, so you're going to lose mark if you did that. So 5.5 seconds. All right, so be careful about answering the questions it's not it would be 3sf if it didn't mention one decimal place but it mentions one decimal place so you must write it 5.5 seconds if you put 5.46 you would definitely lose a mark because you're not following the clear instruction there okay so there we have the answer to question number three from june 2018 m1 um, the international a level paper thank you for watching um, other questions from this same paper will be found in the playlist which should be in this area here. Other questions from this topic of kinematics will be found in the playlist over here. If you want to subscribe to my channel, you can do so over here. And I will have some other M1 stuff on the card at the top, um, top of the page here. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon in another video.